In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a grindhouse style movie poster, whether you're making a poster for your own schlocky film or mashing up the poster for your favourite movie. This tutorial is rated N for noob, which means that if you're just starting out in Photoshop I'm going to give you heaps of hints, tips and shortcuts. Along the way you're going to learn about filters, text layers, vector shapes, clipping masks, blending modes, smart objects and all manner of Photoshop goodness. If you're an experienced Photoshop user, this tutorial probably isn't for you. First, let's talk about the Grindhouse aesthetic. The term Grindhouse refers to the cheap, poorly made films that studios churned out largely for the drive-in audience. Without big name stars or a decent budget, the posters for these films often pushed the fact that they were violent and shocking. These posters often featured hand-painted images, hand-cut half-tone photographs, grayscale or black and white pictures against solid colours, and sensational taglines. Before you get started, make sure you check out some actual Grindhouse posters for a bit of inspiration. Okay, first up, I'm going to create a new document. So I'm going to do that by going to Command N on my keyboard. That's Control N if you're using a PC. First up, I'm going to call this uh, document Assassin Biker Chicks from the Future, which is the name of the uh, fictional movie that I'm creating this poster for. Next, I'm going to go to um, International Paper and select A4. Select a size of paper um, that you can print out on. So if you're in the US, you might select US Letter, for instance. Um, I'm just going to make sure that the color mode is set to RGB and 8-bit. Um, I've been playing around with different color modes here, so that's why it wasn't correct. And I'm going to hit OK. Um, so I've got my document open now. And first up, I'm going to create um, a halftone effect on one of the images that I'm going to use on my poster. Uh, to do that, I'm going to go to the File menu, go to Open, and select one of the images um, that I'm using for this tutorial. Okay, there are a number of different ways that you can create a halftone effect in Photoshop. Uh, I think this is the most authentic, um, even though it is a little bit more awkward to do. Um, I'm going to go up to the Image menu, go down to Mode, and go to grayscale. Photoshop's going to warn me that I'm um, knocking the color out of this image, um, but that's cool. Once again, I'm going to go up to the image menu, go down to mode, and choose bitmap. Now this is where you've got to put in a few different settings. Um, I'm just going to make sure that the uh, resolution of the input and the output matches. I'm going to use halftone screen and hit OK. Now the settings I found work really well here and look terrific are a frequency of 30, um, an angle of 20, and um, the shape is round. So when I hit OK, you'll notice that um, it's applied a uh, sort of old school halftone effect to this image. I'm just going to hit, hit Z on my keyboard and zoom in to show you what this looks like a little bit closer. And I think that's a really cool effect. Um, zooming back out, I'm just holding down the Option key um, with the Zoom tool. Uh, I'm going to select this image, copy and paste it into my other document. So I'm going to hold down Command A, that's Control A on a PC, to select all. Command C to copy, jump into my document over here, and hit Command V to paste. Now I'm going to make this a little bit larger and sort of move it into position. Um, to transform something like I just did in Photoshop, you hit Command T and just hit Enter to apply the changes. Uh, to start off with, I'm going to cut this out, and there are a number of ways that you can extract an image from a background in Photoshop. Um, the way I'm doing it uh, today is using the Polygon Lasso tool. The Polygon Lasso tool lives over here in the tool palette. Uh, if you can't see it immediately, it may be that it's hiding under the regular um, Lasso tool. So I'm going to grab the Polygon Lasso tool, and I'm going to um, basically select this image um, just by clicking around like this a little bit at a time. Now I'm not trying to be particularly um, accurate as I do this, because what I want this to look like um, is that this image has been sort of hastily cut out um, with a pair of scissors, uh, which I quite expect is how quite a few Grindhouse posters were made. Um, so I'm going to um, cut around um, the entire image of my biker here, just like this. And once again, um, there are a bunch of ways you can do this with other tools far more effectively than this, uh, but this is the look uh, that I'm going for. So as I reach the bottom here, I'm just going to go around, back around here to select um, that part of the image, and I'm going to hit uh, delete on my keyboard. 
um, to remove the background. Now you'll notice I've got a selection here to deselect in Photoshop, hold down Command D, and that's Control D on a PC. I'm going to hit um, Z on my keyboard to grab the zoom tool and zoom in on this part of the selection right here, uh, part of the image. Once again, I'm going to grab the Polygon Lasso tool. The shortcut for that is L on your keyboard. Um, you'll find the more you work in Photoshop, the um, you'll, you'll become much more efficient if you um, remember some of these shortcuts. Uh, so I'm just going to draw around, select this bit, hit delete, and hold down Command D to deselect. I'm going to press H on my keyboard to grab the hand tool just so I can move around here. And I'm just going to delete this bit now, once again, pressing L on my keyboard to select um, the Polygon Lasso tool. And I'm going to select and remove this bit here. Double clicking to close that selection, hitting delete on my keyboard and pressing Command D to deselect. Once again, I'm going to press H on my keyboard to grab the hand tool. And there is another small part of the image that I want to remove here. It's just the gap um, beneath her arm. And I'm going to hit delete. And once again, Command D to deselect. Um, pressing Z on my keyboard, I'm going to grab the zoom tool, hold down the Option Alt key, and zoom out a little bit. Okay, uh, now that I've um, sort of cut that image out from the background, what I'm going to do is resize it and move it into position. To free transform any layer in Photoshop, just hold down Command T on your keyboard. Once again, Control T on a PC. Uh, I'm going to hold down the shift key while I drag these handles and what that's going to do is basically um, constrain the proportions of the image so I don't end up with um, a sort of awkwardly uh, wide or skinny image which looks really bad. I'm going to move it into position and hit enter on my keyboard to apply those changes. Next up um, I'm going to create um, a rectangle um, in the bottom third of this image. And to do that, I'm going to select the rectangle tool over here, um, which creates um, a vector object. Next up, I'm going to select a color. Um, and the color I'm going to choose here is this particular shade of red. And um, you can choose colors just by clicking on the foreground color and then choosing them from this color picker. Um, and this is actually the precise shade of red that I want to use. So I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to draw um, this rectangle in the lower third of the image here, just like that. Now you'll notice over here in the tool palette, um, I've created uh, this vector object here, this rectangle, and the color is red. One of the great things about working with vector objects is you can always just double click on that color swatch there and change the color um, at any point, which is really cool. Down the bottom of the Layers palette, you'll notice there's an FX drop-down menu, and when you select a particular layer, you can apply um, different effects to that layer. So I'm going to select Stroke, so I can put a line around this particular object. Um, as far as the settings go here, I'm just going to make um, this the color black, uh, which it's already set to, and I'm going to adjust the size here. Now, what I want to do is have the um, line on the inside of this object so I can actually see it. And as I increase that size, you'll notice that um, it appears on the image there. I'm going to hit OK. Now, of course, um, I've drawn this rectangle in front of the figure of our biker here, and I don't want that. Over in the layer palette, I'm going to drag this layer and drop it underneath uh, that image. Uh, I'm just going to move the image of the biker over to the right a little bit. So I've got a bit of space for my title here. And I'm going to add some text. Um, to do that, I'm going to press T on my keyboard to grab the text tool. And I'm going to draw a text box um, that basically fills up this region. OK, um, to change fonts and to manipulate fonts in Photoshop, you can use the options bar at the top of the screen. I really like using the character palette. Um, so if you go to Window and Character, you'll notice that brings up the character palette over here where you can change the size, uh, the letting, that is the space between the lines, and a whole bunch of other options as well. As far as color goes for this text, um, I'm going to click on that and basically change it to white um, because that's what I want and I'm going to hit OK. Um, 
the font I'm going to um, set to impact and I'm going to type some words down here. Assassin like a chicks from the future. Now, of course, um, the size here isn't right. So I'm just going to go through, um, I'm using my arrow keys to move the insertion point around here. I'm going to hold down the shift key and use the right arrow key just to select um, the first words here. The shortcut for making text larger in Photoshop is command shift greater than, uh, and I'm going to just increase the size of that text until it fills up the space. Um, once again, I'm just going to use my arrow keys to move this insertion point around. Hold down shift and I'm pressing the left arrow key here just to select biker chicks. Um, once again, command shift greater than makes text larger. Now you'll notice that um, I've increased the size of this text and haven't adjusted the letting the space between the lines. If I go over to my um, character palette over here, I'm going to click in the, um, the letting field and I'm going to just press the up arrow key and this incrementally increases um, the space between the lines until I get, once again, I'm just going to select the text here until I get the precise spacing that I want here. And a lot of design work is um, making very small changes like this. I'm going to increase the size of from the, and once again, with that line selected, increase the space between the lines. I could create these as separate text objects, but um, I prefer having, um, you know, doing it in this way. Once again, I'm going to select the word future, command shift greater than, command shift, command shift less than um, makes text smaller. So that's handy to remember as well. And just increase that. And now that I'm done, I'm going to hold down Command, Enter to apply those changes. Next up, I'm going to add an R rating logo to my um, poster here. I'm going to hold down Command Tab to jump into Safari. Um, and when you're on a Mac, you can just drag and drop images um, directly from the internet. What you'll notice is that I've got the R rating logo here. I'm going to move it down into the bottom corner of my document and hold down Command T to free transform that and just increase its size um, so that it takes up um, the lower portion of this document. Now I'm going to put some more images um, into this particular document, but first up I'm going to draw the objects um, to hold them. And I'm going to go over to the um, tool palette here and grab the rectangle tool once again. Now over here uh, I'm going to draw um, a rectangle um, which takes up about this much space. Now what you'll notice is Photoshop has automatically added a stroke to this object. Um, I actually want a slightly thinner stroke here, so I'm going to go over to the Layers palette, double click on the stroke beneath that layer, and just make it slightly smaller, and hit OK. Now one of the great things about uh, Photoshop is once you've drawn something, uh, you don't need to draw it again, you can just copy it. Um, so I'm going to grab the Move tool by pressing V on my keyboard, and when you're moving something around and you hold down the option key, you'll notice that the cursor uh, changes to a little duplicate icon. I'm also going to hold down shift so I um, drag this in a straight line and so that I've got two um, rectangles sitting here, one above the other. I'm going to select both of these. So if I go over to my layers palette and hold down the shift key, um, that will allow me to pick up both of those layers and I'm going to move them into position. Now with two layers selected like this, if I hold down Command T, once again, Control T on a PC, and um, I can drag those handles to resize both the objects at once. I'm going to hit Enter now that I'm done. Now to add an image to one of these rectangles, I'm going to go to um, the File menu. I'm going to go to Open. I'm going to select um, the first image that I'd like to put here, and that's this one. I'm going to hold down Command A to select all, Command C to copy, go back to my other document and hold down Command V to paste. Now you'll notice that this image is a little bit small. Uh, normally it would concern me if I was increasing the size of this because it would lose a little bit of quality. Um, but because I'm creating a grindhouse poster, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to hold down 
um, Command T to transform this object, hold down Shift to constrain its proportions, and just move this over the very first rectangle that I drew here. Now in my layers palette, I'm just going to make sure uh, that this is over um, the first rectangle, the top, uh, the top rectangle. It's a really good idea to name layers as you go. I'm going to double click on this and call it um, top rectangle and hit enter. And I'm going to double click on this and call this bottom rectangle and hit enter. Now I'm going to hold down the shift key and select all three of these layers, the two rectangles and the image that I've put in here. I'm going to drag these down to the group icon at the bottom of the layers palette and put them into a folder. This is just going to make moving them around later on a whole lot easier. I'm going to double click on this and call it pictures and hit enter. Clicking on this little arrow is going to open the drop down menu. And here um, you'll notice I've got the top re rectangle here and I've got the first image that I've put in. When you move your cursor between two layers in Photoshop like this and hold down the option key, the cursor changes to a clipping mask icon. Now the way this works is when I click, it clips the image that's above the image below into that object. So you'll notice if I press V on my keyboard to grab the move tool and go over here um, with this um, rectangle, oh, sorry, with this image selected, I can move that around, but it stays inside that object. So it's a really handy way to um, sort of frame up images like this. Okay, uh, I'm going to repeat this process by going to File, Open. I'm going to grab the second image that I want to use. Command A to select all, Command C to copy. Go back to my original document and Command V to paste. Once again, Command T on my keyboard to transform this and make it a little bit larger. I'm going to hit Enter to apply those changes. And over here in my... Um, layers palette, I'm going to drag that above um, the bottom rectangle layer. Once again, hold down the Option or Alt key and click once. And once again, if I select this image in the layers palette, I can move it around until it's in the right position. When we're working with images in this particular document, we're going to be using smart objects and smart filters. Now a smart object is basically like a Photoshop document within a Photoshop document. And the advantage of using smart objects like this is that you can apply smart filters to them. Normally in Photoshop, if you apply a filter, there's no going back, without a lot of hassle at least. With smart filters, you can adjust the filters at any time, which is really powerful. One of the things you'll notice if you look closely at Grindhouse posters is they often feature grainy, blown out images. Fortunately, this effect is pretty easy to achieve in Photoshop. I'm going to go over here to my layers palette and click on the top image um, in my document. I'm going to right click and go to convert to smart object. You'll notice that the thumbnail for this image has changed. I'm going to go up to the filter menu, drop down to artistic and film grain. Now you can play around with the sliders on the right here. When I'm performing this particular effect, I like to have a fair bit of highlight and a reasonable amount of grain, but not so much that it starts to ruin um, some of the black areas in the image. When you're done, just hit enter. Now, one of the advantages of using smart objects and smart filters is over here in the layers palette, you'll notice that this image now has a smart filter applied to it. If you double click on film grain, it's gonna open that window up again and you can change it. So if you're dissatisfied with the effect later on, you can always go back and manipulate it. Many grindhouse posters were painted by hand. In Photoshop, you can give images a hand-painted look by using a number of artistic filters. Don't be afraid to experiment with them until you achieve the desired look. Uh, I'm just going to turn off the film grain effect on this particular image, then go up to the filter menu, drop down to artistic, and the effect that I prefer to use is called palette knife. Uh, the reason for this is if you have a look at something like plastic wrap, um, or if you have a look at poster edges, to me, they never qu quite look right. They never look like they've been hand-painted. Um, so I prefer palette knife. You can play around with the, the stroke um, size, the stroke detail, and the softness, and all of those sorts of things until you get the right um, look. When you're done, just hit OK. 
Another thing grindhouse posters do is they often have two-tone images, so you've got a black silhouette filled with a solid colour. We can simulate this pretty easily by opening up a smart object. So over here I've removed the smart filters that I applied to this image. I'm going to double click on it. Now Photoshop warns me that I'm about to open this image as a separate document. Now to create this effect I'm going to go to um, the layer menu and create a new adjustment layer. Um, the one I'm going to select is threshold and hit OK. Now this is what um, a threshold adjustment looks like. Over here in the adjustment palette you can move uh, this slider left and right to change um, the intensity of that effect until you get something that looks right for the contrast of your image. Now that I'm done I'm going to close this tab and it's going to ask me if I want to save. I'm going to hit save and you'll see that um, that's been um, that effect has been applied to my image. Now what I'm going to do to um, create some color here is go down to the um, effects button at the bottom of my layers palette, uh, go to color overlay and change the blending mode to darken. And that way you'll notice that um, all of the white areas basically become um, take on this color. I'm going to click on the little color tab and you can basically um, use whatever color you like and then hit OK. Now I'm going to add a couple of taglines to this movie poster. I think of Grindhouse posters as the infomercials of the movie poster world. They're always trying to convince you that their film is the most lurid, it's the most shocking. Um, and I'm going to add a few taglines to this poster to create that effect. Uh, to start off with, I'm going to add um, a sort of um, banner to the top of the page here. I'm going to select the rectangle that I drew in the bottom uh, third of the page over in my layers palette here and by pressing V on my keyboard to grab the move tool I'm going to hold down the option key um, to make a copy of this and shift to move it in a straight line and as I drag what you'll notice is that I get a copy of this. Now um, what I'm going to do is hit command T um, on my keyboard um, to bring up the resize handles for this and I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller um, and move it to the top of the image and when I'm happy with what I've got I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. Um, now what I'm going to do is um, type some text up here. Um, I'm going to hit T on my keyboard and create a text box right here. As far as um, text size goes I'm going to set it to about size um, 24 and the font will be impact um, and I'm going to type a tagline up the top here. I had a number of ideas for this, like um, they put the sass in assassin, uh, but in the end um, the tagline I decided for the top here was they the only rules they don't break dot 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 are the road rules exclamation point. Grindhouse posters love their exclamation points. I'm going to hit Command A to select all of this text and then hold down Command Shift greater than just to make it a little bit larger. Fix up some of my typos. Um, I'm going to resize the, the size of this a little bit. Once again, increase the size. Now that I'm done, I'm going to hold down uh, Command Enter. Press V to grab the Move tool. And using the left arrow key, I'm just going to nudge this into position. Now I am going to make the text a little bit smaller. I'm going to hit T to select the text again. Go over to my um, character palette here and just nudge it a little bit smaller um, by clicking on the um, text size and then moving it down like one point. Command Enter to apply that. Um, press V on my keyboard to grab the move tool and once again nudge it into place. Now I'm actually going to change the size of um, the little rectangle that I've got here so I'll select it in the layers palette and hold down command T just to adjust it a little bit. Now that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to add another tagline um, and I'm going to add this one to the bottom right hand corner of the poster. Grindhouse posters can't have too many sensational taglines. I'm going to hit T on my keyboard to grab the text tool and draw a text box down here in the corner. 
Now, the font I'm going to select here is a slightly crazy one. I'd recommend sticking with a, a nice sans serif font for most of the poster, like Impact, like Helvetica, something like that. Uh, but here, I'm going to go for the Crazy Shock Therapy, which is a free font available from Blambot. And I'm just going to change the font there up in the options bar. Um, I'm going to um, maybe just change the size to about uh, 36 or so and type in my next tagline. Carnage on two wheels. Maybe I'll have a carnage on two wheels. Um, what I'm going to do is hit select all here and just increase the size of that a little bit by holding down command shift greater than. Um, I'm going to also set the um, alignment of this to center. Select all and hit center up here in the option bar. Grabbing the move tool um, from the tool palette, I'm going to move it into place. Now to get it to stand out um, on this particular background, uh, what I'm going to do is change the text color to that wonderful uh, red color that I've got in the background. I'm going to hit, uh, press the color button over here in the character palette. And when you're selecting colors um, with the color picker like this, you can always um, just mouse over your image um, and pick a color directly off the canvas and hit OK. Now to make this stand out from the black a little bit, I'm going to select this layer in the layers palette, go down to effects and add a stroke. I'm going to change the color to white. And then just crank up the size a little bit so it stands out. Carnage on two wheels and hit OK. Once again, pressing V on my keyboard to grab the move tool. I'm going to move it into place just like that. Finally, I'm going to add another tagline just above the images here. I'm going to press Z on my keyboard to zoom in. Um, I'm going to type a few different lines um, of text here just by hitting T on my keyboard, creating a text object here. Now, um, the font size I'm going to have is about, I think, size 18. So I'm going to go up to here, change it back to 18, and I'm going to change the font back to impact again. And type in my first um, part of this tagline, a foxy cabal. Um, now to duplicate this, I'm just going to grab my move tool, hold down the um, option key, and drag it to make a copy. The next line I, I'm going to type is deadly assassins. Once again, grab the Move tool in the Layers palette, hold down Option and drag to make a copy. I realize that Deadly Assassins is a tautology, by the way. Um, who came from the future. I'm going to hit Command A to select all because you'll notice that the text has gone outside the size of this text box. Command Shift less than just to make it a little bit smaller. Who came from the future. Once again, grabbing the Move tool from the toolbox, holding down the Option key and dragging. And to kick your ass. And by ass, I mean donkey, of course. OK, I'm going to hit Command Enter to apply those changes. Now what I'm going to do is um, just go through here and uh, adjust the size a little bit, make this a bit smaller. Once again, I'm just um, using the text tool to select this command shift less than to make it a bit smaller. Okay, and I'm going to move these into place. Um, over here in the layers palette, just before I go any further, I'm going to select all of these layers and just drop them um, into a group and call that group um, third tagline and hit enter. Okay, with this first layer selected, I'm going to hit Command T on my keyboard and just rotate that slightly. I'm going to select the next layer, once again hitting Command T and rotating it slightly. And I'm going to repeat that um, for the next few lines of this tagline. Maybe not quite that much. And once again, I'm just using the Move tool, I'm going to sort of move them into place, adjusting them as I go. Okay. 
OK, now what I'm going to do is create a new blank layer by clicking the Create a New uh, Layer icon over here in the Layers palette. Drag it to the bottom of these layers. And I'm going to create um, a sort of border around all of these. I'm going to grab the Polygon Lasso tool again and just create a selection around this like so. Holding down the Shift key, I'm going to create another one down here. And holding down the shift key adds to these selections. And once again, I'm going to make this look slightly wonky, sort of like it's been um, cut out by hand by someone who doesn't particularly care. Now that I've got all of this selected, um, I'm going to hold down, I'm going to press D on my keyboard to return to the default colors. You'll notice that in the um, toolbox over there that my foreground colors change to black. I'm going to hold down the Option key, the Alt key on a PC, and press Delete. And what that does is fills the selection with the foreground color. It's a really handy um, shortcut to know. Now um, I'm going to um, just change the text color here, and I'm going to change it to white. Um, and to do that nice and quickly, I'm going to select these four text layers by holding down Shift on my keyboard. Go to Color in the Character Palette, and just select White and hit OK. And you'll notice that's changed all of that um, to white. Um, what I actually might do here is um, change this color to black. So I'm going to go to my foreground color um, and select actually that red just by using the color picker. Hold down Option Delete, change that to red Command D to deselect. And now I'm going to change um, this layer so it's got a stroke around the edge, um, just like the rest of my document. There we go. And I'm going to hit OK. And just using the zoom tool, zoom out to show you what we've got so far. And this is the part of the tutorial where the magic really starts to happen. If you go to Google and search for old paper, you'll find a whole bunch of royalty-free uh, paper textures out there. I'm going to add a couple of different paper textures here and composite it with the rest of my document to um, create a really impressive effect. First up, I'm going to go up to the File menu and go down to Open. Then I'm going to find um, one of the paper textures uh, that I've downloaded and hit Open. I'm going to hold down Command A on my keyboard to select all, Command C to copy, go back to my document and press Command V to paste. I'm going to hold down Command T to free transform this and hold down Shift just to constrain it. Now that I'm done, I'm going to hit Enter on my keyboard. Now this paper texture is sitting on top of all of my other layers. One of the really powerful things about Photoshop is that it allows you to change the blending mode of a layer, uh, which affects the way it interacts with the layers beneath. To start off with, I'm going to go up to the Blending Mode drop-down menu and just change this to Overlay so you can see what happens. Now that does look kind of cool. I'm also going to try Darken and see what that looks like. Now if you get an effect like this, um, it is possible to go to the Opacity over here in the Layers palette and turn down the opacity of this paper texture maybe to about 40% uh, or so, um, which kind of looks cool. The other option is if you have um, a paper texture that has a really definite color, if you go up to the Image menu, Adjustments, and Desaturate, you can knock that color out um, so you're basically just left with the texture. I'm going to change um, this to Overlay just to see what it looks like. It doesn't look too bad. I actually like the effect that Darken has. Uh, I'm just going to reduce the opacity um, to about uh, maybe about 25% or so. And that looks reasonably good. I'm going to repeat the process by going up to the File menu, Open. I'm going to find another paper texture um, that I downloaded for this tutorial. Once again, Command A to select all, Command C to copy. Go back to my original document and hit Command V to paste. Command T lets me free transform this and I'm just going to hold down the Shift key 
to constrain its proportions, move it over the top of my document and hit enter. Now if I change the blending mode of this to overlay, uh, I get quite an interesting effect and you can already see that this is starting to look like a grindhouse poster. Now I'm going to show you how to create an old paper texture entirely in Photoshop. I'm going to go over to the layers palette here and click on the create a new layer icon and I'm going to make sure that this layer is at the very top of my document. I'm going to go over here to the toolbox and grab the gradient tool. It may be hiding under the paint bucket tool. Uh, the shortcut for doing that is pressing G on your keyboard. I'm going to go up here and just by clicking on this gradient, select the basic uh, black and white gradient um, that's here and hit OK. Now the important thing here is making sure that the mode is set to difference. If it's set to difference, as I draw over here on my canvas, it adds um, to the gradient uh, that I have over here. When I've got something a little bit like this, I'm going to go up to the filter menu, drop down to stylize, and go to emboss. Now, um, the only rule of thumb here is make sure that um, the amount and the height are reasonably um, high here. So I've got the height at about 37. I could crank the amount all the way up and that looks reasonably good. What you don't want is something a little bit like that. You really want a bit of um, contrast there. So you want it to end up looking a little bit like this. I'm going to hit OK. Now as with our other paper textures, what I'm going to do is go over to the uh, layers palette here, change the blending mode from normal to overlay, and as you can see it's already created um, an interesting effect. I might try darken, bring down the opacity a little bit, and there we go, we've got a crumpled paper texture happening on our poster. Now for the next part of this tutorial, we're going to convert all the layers that we have here into a smart object. I'm going to go to the very top layer over here, click on it, scroll down to the bottom. Holding down the shift key, I'm going to click on the very last layer here as well. Right clicking on these layers, I'm going to go to convert to smart object. And that's going to take all of these uh, layers and make them into a single smart object. Now the advantage of doing this is if I go up to layer, layer mask, reveal all, I've now created a layer mask on this object over here. When you paint in black on a layer mask, it hides whatever's in that layer. Now I'm going to use this to weather and age my poster and tear it around the edges without actually changing it. You can always go back to your layer mask and alter it later on, which is really powerful. I'm going to start adding tears and folds to my poster by pressing B on my keyboard to grab the brush tool. I'm going to go up here to the options bar and click on this little drop down menu. There's another little drop down menu here and I'm going to go down and select um, a set of brushes called Faux Finish Brushes. Uh, Photoshop's now asking me if I want to um, replace the current brushes. I'm just going to hit OK. And down the bottom here, um, the very last brush called Veining Feather 2 is the one that I want to use. So I'm going to click on that. Now if I go to the window menu and drop down to Brush, that opens up the brush palette over here. Now what I'm going to do is click on Shape Dynamics and what I want to do is crank up the um, minimum diameter, the angle jitter and the roundness jitter uh, of this brush. So I get a random effect like the one at the bottom here. I'm just going to close this palette and to start off with I'm going to create some folds in my page and the way I'm going to do this is by uh, painting in black. I'm going to press D on my keyboard to return to the default uh, black and white colors. And now I'm going to press X to change the opacity of a brush. You can go up to the opacity menu in the options bar and turn down the opacity. Alternatively, this is a really handy shortcut. If you press 1 on your keyboard, it changes the opacity to 10%, 2 to 20%, 3 to 30%, and so on. When you press 0, the opacity goes back to 100%. For this tutorial, I'm going to turn the opacity of my brush down to 50% and move it just above my poster over here. Holding down the shift key, I'm going to very carefully draw a line down the length of my page like that. I'm going to move the mouse over here now, click, hold down the shift key, and once again, drag a straight line. 
Now what I hope this looks like is that the post has been folded in thirds. Once again I'm going to move my mouse over to the uh, left hand side of the poster here, click, hold down shift and just draw a line across the page. I'm going to repeat this another couple of times, clicking my mouse, then holding down shift and dragging. And you can see these um, lines starting to appear on my layer mask. What I'm actually doing is um, essentially painting holes in my poster. Now using the same brush, what I'm going to do is press Z on my keyboard and zoom in on the corner of my poster here. Now you can see quite clearly um, where I've put those folds. Uh, I'm going to press B to grab my brush tool again. Use the um, right square bracket key to turn that up and I'm going to start painting around the corner here. Now you can start to see um, some transparency appearing below the poster, but that won't be there when it prints out. Now using this brush, you can paint around the edges to um, give it a, a, a sort of frayed and torn look. Uh, I'm going to press zero on my keyboard just to increase um, the opacity to its um, maximum level. So I'm painting um, absolute uh, complete black. Now if I move my mouse over to the Layers palette here, hold down the Alt or Option key on a PC and click once, you can see what I've painted on this mask. So in the corner here I've got some black, um, a little bit of fraying and some grey, and in the middle I've got these sort of uh, tear things. I'm going to Option click the mask again to reveal my poster. I'm going to press H on my keyboard to grab the hand tool. Just move over here to the corner, press B to grab my brush tool again, and very carefully just paint around the edge. Now the secret to this particular effect is not to overdo it. Um, if you do overdo it, it starts to look a little bit um, cheesy. I'm just going to paint a little bit around the edge here. Use the square bracket um, tools to make your uh, brush bigger and smaller. And go around the edge and just um, grunge up your poster a bit. I'm going to press the zoom tool hold down the option key and zoom out to show you what I've got so far. Now I'm going to press B to grab my brush tool and you can paint um, on your mask in the middle of the poster, just add some rips and tears to the center, little imperfections, just to create the impression that this is a, a really old grindhouse poster. Now if you do something you don't particularly like, um, make sure you've got the layer mask selected over here, hit E to grab the eraser tool, use the square brackets to make that eraser larger, and you can go around and remove any of the changes that you've made to the poster. So for example, I could um, take away all of the changes I made to the corner there. And that's the great thing about this approach. It's completely non-destructive, and you can redo it any time you like. So that's it. Uh, that's my Grindhouse poster for Assassin Biker Chicks from the future. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, please leave a comment if you've got any questions.